what's up y'all today i want to start off by taking a deep breath because i know the type of people that are going to click on this video are going to be a little bit like not able to focus so let's take a deep breath together and then we're going to get into it because i have a lot of good info to share with you guys today all right ready deep inhale and release now focus on me, baby. Eyes on me because I gotta share with y'all these tips. I have a list of actionable steps that you can take right now, like literally today, after you watch this video. Write that shit down in a notebook if you can because it'll just be so much easier. You're not gonna remember, let's be honest. So I literally am gonna list them off like one, two, three, four. So get out a notebook or like your notes app or whatever. And let me share these tips with y'all because I have been struggling with this, with this ADHD issue for so long. I actually wanted to title this video, ADHD isn't real. And I told my friend that and she immediately just got so mad, which is logical because that's an outrageous statement. But I do want to talk about the point I was trying to make with this ADHD isn't real title. First of all, it would have been good clickbait, but it's whatever. Um, I don't need to scam y'all. ADHD is real. I don't, I don't know. I'm just a girl, but I have been studying this shit for a long time because when I was 16, I decided for certainty that I had ADHD. Like I, I went my whole life being just fine. When I was little, I remember being in the little accelerated courses for reading or whatever. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm a smart little girl. Um, and then I got to high school and shit went downhill. Let me tell y'all, I was just struggling. Like I could not sit down and do the work to save my fucking life. Like I would wake up every day and be like, all right, I'm gonna work so hard today. And then just not do anything, procrastinate like to the fucking max. It got so bad to the point where all through, honestly, all four years of high school for me, I literally cheated on every homework, every test, every possible chance I could get, I would cheat, like, all the time. I got caught numerous times, literally my freshman year, in a reading class, like a basic ass, like, comprehension reading class. I got caught cheating, it was so embarrassing, I would, like, cry, and then I just kept doing it, literally until, like, my, I remember my junior year of high school, I got caught cheating on the Spanish test. I literally took the answers to the test and shared it with people. And one of those bitches snitched. Still hate y'all to this day, but let me let it go. I'm releasing my hate for whoever snitched on me. But anyways, I literally, the entire grade had to retake the test because of me. Like 100% my fault because I just had to cheat. Like I couldn't learn Spanish. And you know what? Now I'm quite embarrassed because I really wish I knew Spanish. Living in LA, it's honestly so pathetic that I don't know Spanish, but here we are. Anyways, so when I was like 16, I became thoroughly 100% convinced that I had ADHD with no like actual evidence of that. And I told my mom and I was like, you need to take me to therapy. And she was like, all right, fine. You can go to therapy, whatever. And um, so I started going to therapy and then just the entire time I was in therapy, I only went to like three, three therapy sessions before I just like gave up. I don't really know why, but the whole time I was just like, I have ADHD. Can you diagnose me please? I need drugs now. That's all I want. That was my only intentions with therapy. Like I could not see anything but the fact that I had ADHD. Like I was so set on proving to everyone in my life that I had ADHD and that was the reason for why I couldn't fucking function or couldn't do my school. It was the reason I was always cheating. It was the reason I was always getting bad grades. Um, ADHD. And like, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought that once I proved that I had ADHD, that like all of my behavior would be excused for some reason. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. Um, I just ended up with bad grades and that's it. But the reason I wanted to title it ADHD isn't real is because like, 
I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD when I was little. I literally still haven't been diagnosed with ADHD. Um, but the reason I felt all of those symptoms at the time so overwhelmingly was it because I was born with it? Because like when I was in elementary school and middle school, my grades were just fine. Everything was just fine. So it's not like it was like childhood ADHD like it typically is where like you're five years old and your parents are like shit, like there's something wrong with her. Like I was fine when I was little, nothing was wrong. I was honestly quiet, pretty calm kid. And then when I was in high school, after I started all of these habits that we're gonna get into, in this video that's when i started experiencing all these symptoms and that's when i became so convinced so again adhd isn't real it's just i was so convinced that there was no way out of it because i put this label on me i was like i have adhd there's nothing i can do about it and now i'm going to spend the rest of my days trying to prove to everyone i have adhd so that they can excuse my bad poor behavior and lack of focus so that's why I started telling myself, you don't have ADHD, you just need to fix your habits and you just need to fix your eating and your behaviors and you just need to do these things and then it will go away and then you no longer will have ADHD. That you self, like, I inflicted the ADHD upon myself so like therefore it's not even real to me if that makes any sense but it's honestly just a joke, um, maybe I will title it that. I think it would make too many people very angry though, and I don't want those comments. But anyways, so the power of labeling, labeling yourself is so important. Don't waste your time being like, I have ADHD, there's nothing I can do. What even is, no one even really knows, to be honest. Like, I've been studying this shit for so long now, I am 22. I started figuring this out when I was like 15, 16. Everything, I've been researching everything for literally Six years, bro, I've been researching this shit. Like, I kind of know what I'm talking about, a little bit. But at the end of the day, the science, do they don't really know. I'm going to try to explain to you what ADHD is in this, but at the end of the day, we don't really know what the fuck's going on in there. And it's probably your behavior that's causing the problem, especially if you didn't have it when you were a little kid. Adult ADHD, like, maybe that'll be my channel. Adult ADHD isn't real, because, like, it's obviously caused by your actions. So anyways, the symptoms of ADHD, oh, Andrew Huberman taught me a lot of this. That man is so smart. He's a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. If you don't know who he is, you should look him up because what are you doing? You need to learn science. It's important and it will help you. And everything he does is to benefit your health. So you should listen to it if you can. But if you don't have the attention span to do that, listen to me because I also have my own personal experience and I'm going to share what he's taught me and other scientific literature I've read throughout my many years of learning about ADHD and how to cure it. So the symptoms of ADHD, according to Andrew Huberman, are a time management issue which I honestly still experience to this day. I'm literally five minutes late for work every single day. I don't know why. They underestimate the amount of time that it actually takes to do a task. So you're gonna say, oh, it'll take me 20 minutes to get ready for work, but it actually takes 45 and there's no way to shorten that. And then you end up being late, like I do all the time. But there's ways of fixing it. So that's one symptom. The other is that they tend to organize their things in this pile system where it's like just random piles of organization of their items and then if it gets fucked up and moved around it like doesn't work like the pile system doesn't work at all but that's just how your brain likes to your adhd brain likes to organize things and it's not beneficial for anyone and leaves you very unorganized um what else Oh, they struggle with working memory. This one's really important to me because I am literally a waitress and it requires like a just top tier level of working memory because the entire time you're like collecting information and then trying to take that information, prioritize it, and then go do it. And then come back and collect more and then go do that. And so I end up with this list of like fucking 10 things sometimes that are supposed to be in my working memory and because my working memory 
isn't the best because of this ADHD phenomenon. Um, I end up forgetting things on that list, not getting them done, and then someone's mad. Always. So, these things are very important to me, and they should be important to you as well, because I'm sure you need your working memory for a lot of stuff, and it's just important. Um, also, impulse control. This one's crazy for me, because I have lacked impulse control for so long. I feel like I'm finally getting it under wraps i'm in a good point but i still struggle with it i think this will be an ongoing thing forever for me but i have literally ruined entire friendships like years years long like deep friendships because of my lack of impulse control so if you don't think these things are important like if you are just brushing this off like really dig deep like i know this is affecting you i know it is it affected me it's like literally hurt me so many times because i never knew how to control it and drugs weren't the answer for me and i'll get into that as well but the last symptom is getting easily annoyed and this one makes me think of my roommate slash best friend she always chews with her mouth open and i get so mad i'm gonna punch her in the face sometimes i have to leave the room but stuff like that like you get easily annoyed so time management issues losing shit all the time. I've lost so many things. When I was in middle school, I think I lost six phones in one year once. One time I lost my flute. Look at my I literally lost it. That shit was sad actually. Um, working memory, impulse control, and getting easily annoyed. And I'm sure there are others, but those are the main main symptoms. And now we're gonna talk about what causes these symptoms. So there are two circuits in your brain the one is called the default mode network and then the other is called the task network so the default mode network is active when you're not doing anything when you're supposed to just sit there and relax that's what's working the default mode network is at play when you're doing nothing when you're not focused on a task or goal the task networks are goal oriented they're activated when you need to get something done and you're trying to do it. And dopamine is the conductor of these two networks. And so they are supposed to seesaw. So when the default mode network is on, the task network is supposed to be off. And when the task networks are on and active, the default mode networks are supposed to be off. And people with ADHD, they're all fucked up. Like, they aren't doing this seesaw thing. They're doing, like, and it's, just, and it's just not working. And so you can relate it to, like, a symphony, right? So the conductor of the symphony tells you when to play and when not to play. And pauses are important in a symphony. And so if the conductor is absent and distracted and, like, then people are going to end up playing when they're not supposed to play. And then the symphony going to sound like shit. Because Samantha played that random B note in the middle of the pause. And now it sounds bad. So anyways, another theory of ADHD. So that's like kind of what we know, right? But there's a theory that ADHD is caused by these things called attentional blinks. So people who are, have ADHD can be hyper-focused. So they took this study, and the first example Andrew Huberman used in this video that I watched, Andrew Huberman told me about this, but it's in a book, hold on. Altered Traits, that is the book where they told me about this study. So the Where's Waldo study is like, you know, the Where's Waldo thing where you're trying to find the man in the outfit or whatever, um, found that when you ask to find Waldo, you find Waldo, but you miss a Waldo sitting right next to it. Like, you see, you, you're given a task, find Waldo, you find Waldo, but you can't see that there's another Waldo sitting right next to it after you find the first one. Like, you completely miss that there's two Waldos, even though it's so obvious when you already know that and you're looking at it. And then the other example is they flash letters, A through Z, on a screen really fast. They were like, Pfft. And they asked 
the, I almost said contestants, subjects. The subjects of the study were asked to find the letter R and Z. And when they found the letter R, they couldn't see the Z after. So this created this whole theory called attentional blinks. So it means that you're so hyper-focused on one task that you're missing things after it. Like, they found the R but couldn't find the Z. So once the task is completed, there's this moment after the task is completed where your mind just like ceases to function. And that's very high in people with ADHD and like literally it, that is the fundamental reasoning behind ADHD but like obviously it's hard to prove and there's not a lot of science on that but anyways so people with ADHD are hyper focused which causes them to have more attentional blinks and thereby forgetting a bunch of shit and losing focus so that's the basic premise of what ADHD is now I'm gonna get into like very basic simple things, tools that might help you. <clears throat> and the list is gonna go on and on. So listen up now, cause here are the actual steps. The first one that Andrew, Ham Andrew Huberman gave in this video is to purposefully widen your view. So he described like a straw view, like I'm looking at you. So you can look at, I'm looking at the camera right now. I can either look at the camera or I can choose to see the camera and what's all around me. Like I can, choose to direct my vision at the camera or in a more panoramic view of my scenery I can like dilate my eyes you know I don't know if dilate's the right word but if you do panoramic view more often it reduces attentional blinks according to him um so that's just one thing just literally widening your view your vision vision is important a very important aspect in all this and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second but another tool that they gave to children I don't know if it's been studied on adults but I have tried this many times and it really works for me so like before I sat down to film this I focused on an object in my room it was literally my computer charger plugged in I focused on it and just tried to override all other thoughts and just focus on that object for a minute and I even tried to also override blinking because blinking has something to do with dopamine too which has been proven in science but they're kind of confused like why and so am I but I know it does <laughs> that's all we know and that's all that's really important for this activity so for one minute you're gonna focus on an object and try to override blinking obviously if you need to blink like if your eye is fucking drying out like obviously blink like don't cause yourself physical harm what the fuck but like just attempt okay just like put a little bit of effort into blinking less during this one minute of staring at an object and use the panoramic view but look at that object all right so that's the second one the third one is a focused based meditation no, I'm not going to try and tell you to do meditation every day, da, da, da. I do that all the time. I do think meditation is important. But this one specifically, there's a study that was done. They had people do a focused-based meditation for 17 minutes, and they found that it literally permanently changed their brain structure and reduced symptoms of ADHD. One focused-based meditation for 17 minutes. So... Yes, meditation is good for you, you should do it. But just this one specific focus-based focus meditation for 17 minutes. So what is a focus-based meditation? It is, let's do breathing. Breathing is the easiest thing to focus on. So you're gonna sit down, you're gonna close your eyes. You're going to set a timer if you want or don't. It doesn't really matter. Well, you, no, you're supposed to do it for 17 minutes. Set a timer. <laughs> I'm talking about for every day. It doesn't really matter as much. Do it as long as you can. But for this one time, okay, we're gonna set a timer for 17 minutes and we're going to sit there and focus on our breathing. And every time we get distracted from our breathing by thoughts or other feelings in our body or noises or literally anything, once we notice that we've been distracted, so we're gonna be breathing, 
focusing on our breathing, yep. Understanding your breathing, yep. And then, oh, pancakes. Mmm, delicious. That sounds really good. I should make that after this. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. I'm supposed to be focusing on my breathing. Okay, back to breathing. And then you get distracted. And then you focus. And then you get distracted. And you focus. And it's okay. The goal isn't to be focused the entire time. That's, like, basically impossible unless you're a fucking monk. Which, we're obviously not. We have ADHD. <laughs> like, be for real. Um, you're not supposed to focus the entire time. If you literally get distracted, I used to get distracted the entire time that I would meditate. Which is why you should probably do it more than once. But, for the sake of this, really do your best to focus, okay? Focus on your breathing. Don't worry if you get distracted, that is okay. It is part of the meditation. Get distracted, remember what you're doing, go back to breathing, okay? 17 minutes, that's it. Um, so that was number three. Okay, number four, this one's so easy. Omega-3 fatty acids, specifically a thousand milligrams of EPAs or more. So look for that, okay, because some of them don't have a thousand milligrams of EPAs, especially if you just go on Amazon, like I just looked up on Amazon, one had like 600, one had like 300, like make sure it's a thousand milligrams, one gram plus of EPAs in your omega-3 fatty acids fish oil. Take it every day. That's so easy. There are other supplements that I personally haven't tried. I've tried the fish oil, great, wonderful. Um, I haven't tried these other ones, so if you're willing to do that, if you're really looking for a solution, I'd recommend it. But these other ones have more downsides than the omega-3 fatty acids, so be careful. But this one I can't even pronounce. It's called phosphatidylserine. Phosphatidylserine. <laughs> I don't know. P-H-O-S-P-H-A-T-I-D. Y-L-S-E-R-I-N-E. -E. That is ridiculous, but I'll link it. Um, alpha GPC and L-tyrosine. Those are three other compounds, supplements, um, that you can take to help with your ADHD symptoms. And you just need to be careful. Don't take all four of those at one day and just start taking them because you're not going to know what's causing a problem because one of them might cause some issues. I don't know, like digestive, mood, like, I don't know. There's some problems with those. So try them out one at a time. Start with the omega-3 fatty acids because it's the one that's least likely to cause you issues. Um, number six. This one, honestly, is just overarching, but cutting out sugar. Sugar, as in like high fructose corn syrup and added sugars in anything. And this one's crazy for me because I'm so addicted to sugar. And the reason you're addicted to sugar is because when you're little and now, you are trying to self-medicate because sugar actually causes a spike in dopamine. And the whole reason we're having this issue is because a lack of dopamine a lack of natural base level of dopamine. It's too low, and so when you eat sugar, you feel better, you feel more focused. But it causes your baseline to go down, and also sugar's just genuinely so bad for you. Which, you know that. Like, don't be dumb. You know that it's bad for you. They don't exactly know why, but they do see a lot of links in these studies of sugar and symptoms of hyperactivity. So that one's not 100% proven, but it's a very, very good start. And even if it doesn't cure your ADHD by cutting out sugar, it's gonna help you in general. Like, you already know that. So cut out sugar as best you can, do your best. I know you're probably addicted. If you have ADHD, you're probably really addicted, but you can do it, I believe in you. I'm on the same journey. I kinda wanna post a video about it too, so subscribe if you wanna see i'm gonna test all this shit out because i've tested a lot of it but not all of it so maybe i should keep going through i do feel better nowadays but there's still things i struggle with and so i'm gonna go through these so if you want to see more if you want to see like me going through it and seeing if it works before you try it subscribe i'll keep you updated but anyways number seven is an elimination diet which i haven't tried yet well, I have here and there, but not like formally. I would like to do it formally, but you can go get these tests that tell you 
what you're allergic to mildly not like allergic where you're like <gasps> but allergic to like oh uh, you get a little bloating or like you get more symptoms of adhd are you following so um you can find out what you're allergic to and then eliminate those that's basically the whole diet <laughs> But there's also like other forms of doing this like elimination diet where you don't have to go get the test. You can just take the top 10 allergens that most people are allergic to, cut those out and then add them back in one by one. And that's great. Um, the problem with this in children, I don't know about adults, but in children, they did find that when they did this testing and then took all the foods out, when they introduced them later in life, they were actually more allergic than they were before they eliminated it. Like it causes the allergy to worsen. So that is one concern with this elimination diet. But you could also just do the typical, like, and I honestly don't know if it's the same in adults. And I don't know if anyone knows, but if you find out, let me know in the comments. Anyways, so this last tip bro, number eight, this one's the most important to me. This one is the one that has changed my life the most drastically and it's kind of a lot so prepare yourself but it's a dopamine detox. So let me explain dopamine real quick. So let me get this. So here's your baseline of dopamine, right? When you have sex. When you eat sugar, when you watch TV, when you doom scroll, when you eat junk food, when you play video games, when you're gambling, when you're watching porn, etc, etc, your dopamine spikes up. So this is the baseline, and it spikes up. And you know Newton's, what, third law or some shit? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So your dopamine goes up when you fuck, and then it goes down. And then now we're down here and that's when you feel like shit after you do something like eating sugar or having sex. Um, and then it goes down here and then when it comes back up, it never quite reaches baseline. So now your baseline dropped. Basically that's why dopamine, unhealthy forms of dopamine that spike like this go down are bad for you because they drop your baseline dopamine. So this is what I believe happened to me, and this is why I believe ADHD is not real in my, for me, <laughs> personally. This is a personal issue. Um, it's because I was just doing every fucking activity in the books, like, ever imaginable that spikes your dopamine. And so literally over time, like, my baseline level just went down and down and down until I like had not enough and now I can't focus anymore because my dopamine is supposed to conduct my default mode network and my task network to be like pa, 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 pa. but my dopamine's like fucking confused and it's like and now I have issues so I believe that is my fault that I can't focus and that I have all these other issues that I previously listed because I was literally doing all of the actions that are spiking my dopamine and causing my baseline level to go down. So examples of this are drinking alcohol, sex, TV and movies, sugar and junk food. Like there's so many junk foods, especially in America if you live here. Congratulations, you have to deal with this. But America has the worst, worst ingredients in their foods, in the grocery stores and stuff. And if you're not aware of that, you're going to have some serious issues with a whole range of health problems in your body and especially with ADHD. So please start reading the labels on the foods that you get or just literally, this is, this is really important advice. For ADHD and for general health. Try to eat as much as you can but like let's just start with one meal a day because is that too much to ask for really? One meal a day where you only eat like one ingredient food so like salmon, brown rice, broccoli and then of course you can add some seasonings whatever like 
live your life don't eat that plain that's literally ridiculous um but just one meal a day please like steak asparagus potato fucking chicken rice maybe a little sauce all right live your life girl but one ingredient like where you look at the ingredient like what is the ingredient in potatoes potatoes next time you're in the grocery store if you don't know about this already go look at the spaghetti sauce pick out the rayos one and then pick out another random one that's cheap and look at the ingredients rayos literally will be like tomatoes olive oil garlic but the other ones will be like sugar and like concentrate tomato concentrate and like natural flavors y'all don't even know what natural flavors are they can put whatever the fuck they want in there that's so dangerous stop don't eat those so please when you go to the grocery store look at the ingredients label if you're not buying stuff that are literally like steak potato beef broccoli chicken asparagus you know if you're buying something like tomato sauce or anything else please look at the ingredients please try to get the healthy one the rails is really expensive though I'm not gonna lie but there are other options nowadays so please look be willing to spend another fucking dollar like you need to relax because your health is so important one dollar is so worth it because you're gonna end up making more money from how intensely you can focus because you changed your diet okay so be real with, with yourself for a second anyways <laughs> back to what spikes dopamine risk taking spikes your dopamine that's just self-explanatory um, I used to have an addiction to social interaction, so like I couldn't do anything productive, which is why I was always failing my classes. It's because I wouldn't study, I would spend all my time hanging out with people, and it literally didn't matter who it was, they could be the most random motherfuckers on this earth who aren't doing shit, who are lazy, who are stupid, who are ugly, and I would hang out with him because, um, first of all, probably because I believed that I was lazy, stupid, and ugly, but second of all, because I was just addicted to social interaction because it was just a way of coping like it was a form of escapism for me hanging out all the time like you think it's good to hang out with your friends it is if they're talking about healthy things and doing healthy things and encouraging you to do healthy things and be a better person these people that I was hanging out with were not doing that I was addicted to them I would hang out with them my dopamine would spike and then I would leave them and it would go way down and then I'd be left with a lower base level of dopamine not ideal. Um, here's one no one wants to talk about. OnlyFans. Or just being a woman in this century, in this day and age, and you go online and some man's in your DMs being like, hey, I'll pay you $50 to send me this picture of you. And you're like, oh my god, it's a picture. It's so easy. Oh my god. Like, why not like what's it gonna do what's it gonna hurt nothing's gonna happen and then you send that and it, that is so addicting to just get money for doing nothing you already can't focus you already feel like a lazy piece of shit because of this problem of lack of dopamine dopamine is literally motivation by the way like they are hand in hand they are the same um you don't feel motivated to do anything ever and so someone giving you money to do basically virtually nothing that is going to become so addicting for you and i'm sure it is for so many girls and maybe i'll make a future video about that as well because that's such a serious issue that no one likes to talk about because it's obviously a messy subject but anyways um basically anything that you have a tendency to over consume is probably causing a dopamine spike like a huge dopamine issue here so um if you can come up with a list of these type of things oh i forgot to mention partying they all kind of go hand in hand because it's like you're addicted to attention which again only fans partying going out um having a fuck ton of friends and refusing to do anything but hang out with them uh shopping oh my god shopping is a crazy one Anything you're addicted to, okay? Because you can... I've met some girls who are addicted to shopping. It's actually so sad. Uh, anything you're addicted to, 
anything you tend to overconsume, have a problem with, do your best to cut these out. Like make that a fucking priority in your life and I promise you your focus will increase so much. Did I mention doom scrolling? Did I mention social media? That one's very, very hits home with me because I chose to delete my social media for two years and it helped tremendously. But at the time when I deleted it, I was so severely addicted. I was spending um, like over 30 hours a week on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Those were the three apps. I added up my screen time one day for the week and it was literally 30 hours of just those. That's not even texting my friends, FaceTiming my friends, because you know I had so many fucking friends. Um, that was just those three social media apps and like honestly seeing that, you should go look at yours right now, yeah. Uh, nine, number nine actionable step is go check your social media usage. I guarantee you it's causing a problem no matter how much time you consume it. Um, I have recently introduced it back for like business purposes, um, but honestly at first it didn't go well. I was like, I'm still addicted. And I'm still considering not using it, even though it's not supposed to be, it's not intended for pleasure for me anymore, which is why I introduced it back. But I still am going back and forth with it. Like, I don't think I can have a personal account. It's just so addicting to look at. I don't know. I don't know what to do about that, but just delete it. If you're not actively making money or if you don't have like a such a guaranteed plan path to follow to make money on social media and to benefit yourself and other people by using social media like just fucking delete it there's literally no point in having it it's honestly childish and it's actually rotting your brain i'm not even gonna lie to you <laughs> i know it's such a crazy standpoint but it is it literally is you are context switching every fucking second like your brain's not made to do that it's not made to switch context that fast it needs to slow down. You need to be present. And that is just taking away all your time and attention, completely fucking your dopamine system. I promise you, even literally, if you take one thing away from this video, I would say stop doom scrolling. Stop going on social media. If you have to literally delete it to get yourself to stop because you're addicted, then do that. It's so worth it. You don't fucking need it. You literally don't. You might be trying to tell yourself you do, you don't. I'm sorry, you literally don't, unless you're making money. Then like, fine, make your money, girl. Even then, like, it's probably not good. No doom scrolling. Um, the 10th actual step I have for you is cold exposure. Actually, that's not as a, a direct solution to ADHD as everything else I just said, but the sheer fact that you are sitting in this fucking cold ass water and all you can think about is I want to get out. I want to leave. I'm going to get out. I want to get out. Please let me out. I'm gonna get out. I can't do this anymore. I literally am gonna get out any fucking second. Like that's what goes on in my brain when I'm in the cold exposure. And choosing to override all of those thoughts and continue the task at hand, you have one job. Stay in the water. That is your one job. And so all these thoughts interrupting like for the entire time that you're in the water and you being like, no, I'm not listening to those thoughts. I'm focusing on this task. That is practicing focus. That is how you practice focus. And it also increases your dopamine. I think cold exposure is great. It's hard to access. I understand that. Take a cold shower, please. Keep your house warm so that when you get out, you're not like freezing to death. Um, but also if you're already warm in the first place, if you're already like, mm, I could, I could use a like cool off if your house is set to like 70 or whatever, whatever keeps you slightly warm, then when you, you'll feel more motivated to get into the cold shower. You won't avoid it as much because like if I'm already fucking cold, I'm not, you bet your ass I'm not getting in a cold shower. Are you serious? That's the last thing on earth I'm going to do. Like I already don't have enough dopamine motivation to take a cold shower as it is, especially if I'm already cold. So keep your house warm, that's my advice to you. 
but take your cold showers because while you're in the cold shower you're gonna be like I want to get out so bad and you're gonna not listen to that and that's going to build up your focus here is a list to end this video on of things you can do instead of partying, drugs, alcohol, sex, doom scrolling, video games, gambling, shopping, taking risks. Taking risks. Oh god. I can make a whole video on that too. Um, instead, you should exercise. Go in nature. Check off a to-do list. This one's great. I Every single night, I write out a to-do list of just three things. Just three. No more. No less. Three. It's the golden number right there. Three things and I make an actual check box and then I do those things and then I check them off and the actual checking off of the thing feels so good to me that it motivates me and gives me, increases my baseline level of dopamine so that I'll want to do more tasks tomorrow. That's such a good tip, bro. You should really listen to that one. That one's easy too. Um, you just gotta make the habit of it. But if you can do that, it's gonna change your life. Um, hugs. Hugs increase dopamine. Reading, another way for you to access your ability to focus and try to read things that you actually enjoy. Otherwise, you're not gonna do it. <laughs> um, creative acts like painting or like making jewelry. Ooh, plants, like plant a literal plant. Grow it, grow it from a seed. You can do that, what's it called, propagating? Like there's so many cool things you can do with plants. Plants are so cool. Read a book about plants. Read a cookbook. Learn to cook. Oh my god, see, bro? And that's so feminine, too. Like, you're gonna feel so in your element if you do all those things. Um, laughing. Gratitude. Gratitude's a crazy one. I should make individual videos on all this shit. Uh, sunlight. Sunlight's so important. Get sunlight into your eyes, like, in the morning and, um, before the sun sets. That will get your circadian rhythms back in alignment and it should help with your dopamine levels as well dopamine detox there's a million videos of that on the internet so if you want to learn more about that do that andrew huberman um i will list a bunch of shit in the description because i went over so much in this video but those are your 10 actionable steps for curing adhd i hope they work for you please start a discussion in the comments how do you feel about ADHD? Do you think it's real? What are your personal experiences? Because I only have my own experience. I don't have other people's experience really, except for other like college age people like me who, you know, they kind of have the same problem where it's like, well, just, oh my God, I forgot to talk about Adderall. So from what I learned from Andrew Huberman about Adderall, if you take Adderall with the intention of um, learning how to focus, it actually can be good because at first I was so against drugs because like, especially like antidepressants and Adderall, they, first of all, can be addictive, especially with someone like me who's like literally risk taking, a, obviously have an addictive personality, hence all of my fucking problems. Um, so obviously just throwing a drug at this problem is just a band-aid to me. Like that is not going to be a solid solution. And my mama knew that, and that's why she never let me go on Adderall. But um, from what they know now, if you take the drug just once, twice, maybe three times on separate occasions, and then do one of those focus-based learning activities and like literally deliberately try to teach yourself how to focus like take the drug with the intention of teaching yourself how to focus then you don't need it again i feel like taking adderall is probably the most risky just because of the risk of addiction and also if you do it with intention of just band-aiding the problem and you're not actually becoming aware of the issue at hand and what is causing it and you don't know anything else so you just take it. you're like oh i have adhd take adderall done and then you just take it the rest of your life and you have to increase it and it's just a big big mess so like if you're gonna take adderall it can be useful yes but do it with the intention of teaching yourself how to focus and then using that when you're not on adderall because taking adderall every day for years is just not the brightest idea, but if you have to take it every once in a while, like 
once every few months to reteach yourself, honestly. If you can't do that, but don't get addicted. That's that's the one caveat is you shouldn't get addicted. It's like not it's just not a good solution. Be honest with yourself. My camera won't stop overheating, which I'm gonna take as a sign to stop rambling, but be careful with drugs. Don't use it as a band-aid. That's all I gotta say. And um I love you. Please help yourself today. Do something good for yourself. That's all I got. Links to everything will be in the caption. I know I said a lot, so hopefully you took notes. Mwah.